Hello, 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 hello. Come on in, family. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> this is our Tuesday meeting. So glad to see every one of you guys. I pray that you're having an awesome day. I pray that you're walking in the question, what would Jesus do? How are you guys doing out there? How is that question working for you? How is that question working for you? What would Jesus do? Is it working for you? Hello, everyone. Greeting, greetings, greetings. God bless you. Is that question working for you? What would Jesus do? Are you guys, are you guys living according to that question? Is it something that you keep asking yourself throughout the day? Are you focusing on that question? I'm not going to let it go. I just hope that we don't get so used to it that it has no sticking. It does. Okay, how many you focusing? Okay, praise God. Yeah, I hope that. I hope that. I hope that um, we don't get so used to it. Right. Totally had a die to myself. And okay, okay, praise God, extending grace, right? Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I hope that we don't get so used to that question because we know we're in the series, right? That it has no meaning. Remember, <clears throat> when you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? It's supposed to stop you in your tracks. It's supposed to have you pause for the cause, right? And have you think, think about. So basically that question, what would Jesus do? It takes you out of you and puts you into him, right? And that's a powerful forward to working for personal relationship. Okay, all right. Well, I just pray that you guys are really sticking to that question. And I pray that the question is being honored. You know, that question should be honored, should be respected. It should be treated really special. Praise God. So I'm happy to see every single one of you guys. Won't you guys start to tag someone now? Won't you press the at? the at symbol and write someone's name in the comment section that way that person can hear this awesome message that we are about to share we are about to hear something really really good so come on in come on in god bless you guys so happy to see you guys so happy to see you guys so happy to see you guys you know as for me i'm really focusing on what would jesus do that question just keeps just keeps man it just plays in my mind like a recording, you know? That question is playing in my mind like a recording. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And it has me pausing. I pause for the cause. I do. It, it, it has me just standing still a lot of times, you know? It's doing a good work, and I love that. Yeah. You kept your mouth shut this week. Okay, okay, Johanna. That's it. Okay, Hannah. I mean, that's awesome. If it's, if it's keeping your mouth shut, then then that's what it's supposed to do. Praise God, all right? And so I'm going to go into a word of prayer. I have two announcements to make. And then after that, we'll get involved with this awesome discussion. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you. We thank you for the opportunity to eat from your table. Father, you are awesome. And we thank you that you continue to give us insight of who you are through your Holy Spirit. But your Holy Spirit comes here by way of Jesus. We also acknowledge your angels, your ministering spirits, the angel of wisdom, angel of uh, deliverance, the angel of healing, uh, the angel of restoration, and any other angel that wants to show up. We welcome miracles, signs, and wonders, and we thank you that you're here to do the work that will glorify and lift up the name of Jesus. I desire to be non-existent. I desire to disappear. So speak in and through me. I yield to you. And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And thank you for demonstrations backing up the word sown. May the word sown find a healthy place to grow in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Family, God bless you. <clears throat> Happy to see you. I'm glad that you're here. Praise God. God bless you. I'm going to uh, make two announcements. And then after that, we'll get it uh, started. So don't forget, the email went out today. And also a, um, a text message will go out sometime this week. This Saturday at noon, we have a prayer workshop. Okay? 
And I uh, hope to see all of you guys on this prayer workshop, okay? Because we know that prayer is very important. And so there's a lot of things that you're going to learn when it comes to prayer. There is a strategy. There's a technique. There, there are ways to pray. There are, there are different kind of prayers, okay? And so you're going to learn all about prayer this Saturday at noon. Again, the email went out today, and in that email, there's a link. If you click on that link, it's going to take you to the workshop, right? And also, a, a, a text message will go out this week as well, all right, to, to remind you that we have this prayer workshop Saturday at noon. Secondly, it is our anniversary, my God. Actually, our anniversary is, uh, we're going to celebrate it this Sunday. So after service, uh, at, uh, between 5 and 8, we're going to the Eastern Henrico Recreation Center. And we're going to celebrate our anniversary. God has been good to us. We started this church right there smack in the middle of the pandemic. And here we are four years later. I mean, it's just amazing to see how God has took us where we came from and all that God is doing. How many of you guys really know that it's important when you have a ministry that God is the one doing the work and not a person? How many of you guys know that out there? Because what I want you guys to, to see is every week, every week God is moving. God is moving. It's never me. And listen, I don't want it to be me. You know, I want I want you guys to experience God. I mean, there's deliverance, there, there's healing, there's wisdom. I mean, we are experiencing the fullness of God every single week. Guys, I want to say one thing to you. Don't take that for granted. Don't take that for granted. Believe me, there are many places, and I'm not saying this in a in a in a in a condescending way. I'm not doing that, but there are many places that don't allow God to flow. Just being honest, there are many places that it's going to give you ritual or religion and not really, you won't see the move of God. So I want to tell you that if you don't know, we are blessed in this ministry. We are because we get to see the set, the, the, the supernatural move of God. And that's how you know that God is moving. You don't want to experience a person. Whenever a person is ministering, you want to experience God and not a person. If you ever experienced me, I failed you. My desire is that you never experience me. My desire is that you always experience Jesus because he's the one. I can't heal you. I can't save you. I can't deliver you, but he can. And so it's really important that we, we know how blessed we are. And we just don't sit on our hands and be like, okay, I'm used to this. No, whenever God moves, we should give God excitement. Praise God. It's no different than when your team is playing and you you know, you know cheering the players on. They, they, they get inspired and motivated. Well, we have angels. And when angels hear us, they get excited. All right? So let's continue with our teaching. I'm asking everyone here to press the share button now. Won't you go ahead and press that share button? I got a great discussion today. Um, uh, today's title is, What Would Jesus Do? And the subtitle is Battle, okay? So the topic for today is, What Would Jesus Do? And the subtitle is the word Battle. So thank you guys for pressing share. Thank you guys for helping me to evangelize. And I promise you, if someone sees this message that you shared, it's going to bless them. They're going to be blessed beyond measure because I'm going to share something that's really powerful. It's going to bring a lot of healing and deliverance. Amen. So go ahead and do that right now in Jesus name. All right. Let me get started here. I'm going to read to you Luke chapter. Yeah. Luke chapter 22. Okay. Verses 39 to 44. And I'm going to read to you from the new King James version again. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 44, and I'm going to read to you from the New King James Version, so get somebody on, you got to hear this, okay? Now listen to this. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as was his, as was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. 
when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. So you see that? Prayer is important, right? Because prayer helps you not enter into temptation, okay? And you're going to learn that on Saturday. Look, prayer is important. When you pray, it helps you not to enter into temptation, okay? That's a different teaching, but I'm, let, me keep, let me keep going because I can teach on that. It's a whole different teaching. I didn't, I didn't want to, I could teach on this. I, should I teach on this? Lord, this is really important. All right, let me keep going. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. There is so much to unpack here. So much to unpack here. You know, I absolutely love Jesus. I absolutely love Jesus. And the reason is, it's because Jesus is truly the sample, the model, the blueprint son. Jesus came down here to really walk it out and to give us the blueprint on how it should be done. I love, love, love Jesus. He didn't come here high on a hog and made it seem like life was really easy. Here we have Jesus in the biggest battle of his entire existence. And listen, this is really powerful because the battle that Jesus is having right now in the scripture is not the battle between him and Satan. It's not a battle between him and someone who don't like him. It's not a battle between him and someone who's trying to mess with him. I love this scripture so much because this is actually a battle of Jesus versus Jesus. This is powerful, okay? I want to share something with you. That the greatest fight you would fight in your life is you. You would never fight anything or anyone greater than you. You are the biggest fight that you would fight forever. There's no one or nothing that you would fight bigger, stronger than you. The devil is no match for you. He isn't. The only power he has is the power we allow him to have. You should share this message. I'm telling you, it's going to, it's going to set somebody free. The biggest fight that you're going to have is you versus you. Here we have Jesus having the biggest fight. And I love it because it shows the struggle of what this looks like. Here we have Jesus in the spirit fighting Jesus in the flesh. And I'm going to tell you something right now. This flesh is a tough opponent. That's the word I want to use. Your flesh is a tough opponent. There is nothing more tougher that you would fight or, or, or face than your flesh. But I love this right here. Because the Bible says that Jesus struggled, but at some point an angel showed up to help him. I, I got news for you. Whenever you are struggling the most, whenever you are battling yourself, an angel shows up to help you every single time. If an, if an angel showed up for Jesus, an angel shows up for you. Every time you're battling yourself, an angel will show up. So what is the battle? It was the spiritual Jesus versus the soul Jesus, all right? The spiritual Jesus versus the soul Jesus. Now, here's the powerful thing about this battle. Jesus saw the crucifixion because he says, I only do what I see my father do, right? So Jesus saw the crucifixion. He also saw the resurrection. So the spiritual Jesus was okay with the crucifixion because he saw the resurrection. But the soul Jesus was not cool at all 
The soul Jesus was saying, no, I don't want you to go through that. No, resist it. No, don't do this. So much so that Jesus began to sweat blood. So this shows how powerful the fight is against you. The fight against you is so powerful that it would have you sweating, not regular sweat, it'll have you sweating blood. That's how strong this fight is. Whenever you have to fight yourself, that's going to be the time where you're going to really have to ask yourself this question. What would Jesus do? There is a part of you that's going against you. Lord, have mercy. Man. There is a part of you that's going against you. And when that part of you wins, that part partners up with Satan. See, Satan, okay, this is this is strong. I, I'm seeing this thing. I'm seeing this thing. Satan is a spectator, okay? And what he does is he brings something in your path to cause a war between you and you. All right, so follow me on this track. As I see this, I'm in a vision. My, my angel of wisdom, is already, he's already working for us. The angel of wisdom is here right now working for us, okay? Satan's job is, is this right here. <clears throat> he puts something in your path. He brings something your way. He brings something your way. And what he does is he says, I'm going to bring this to this person. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to introduce this person or introduce this thing. And when I introduce it, it's going to be a battle of the soul and the spirit. Okay. So once Satan introduces this thing, he backs up. And what he does is he becomes a spectator. He's watching the fight. He's watching the fight. He's watching the spiritual person fight the natural person. And he's waiting to see if the spiritual person will lose to the natural person. And if the spiritual person will lose to the natural person, that's when Satan partners with the soul or with the flesh. And at that point, you're defeated. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? At that point, you're defeated because it's the, it's the soul or the flesh and Satan going after the spirit. And the spirit man, the spirit man now has no wins because he has to back down to what to what has uh, control. You follow me? And so when the spirit don't have control, <clears throat> the soul and the flesh takes over. And when it takes over, now you have a, a, a spiritual force behind you. OK, so it's quite the opposite on the other side. When the, when the spirit takes over, an angel comes. And when the angel comes, the angel helps you to battle your soul and your body. And that's when you win the battle. Just as Jesus, my God, this is so good. This is really good. Just as Jesus was battling himself. But what made Jesus win was when his spirit took over, an angel joined him. Lord have mercy. And when the angel joined him, it made the fight more doable. It gave Jesus the victory. As long as the spirit was winning, an angel showed up. See, angels show up when the spirit wins. But if the spirit is losing, the angel don't show up because at that point, you are legally tied. Lord, have mercy. So good. You are legally tied to the soul. And the soul now is being ruled and reigned by a demonic entity, a demonic angel. Praise God. This is Holy Spirit is giving us wisdom. Praise God. So what you have to do is <clears throat> you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? All right. And when you ask yourself that question and you start to move in the response that you get from Jesus, now an angel comes and gives you the assistance to do it. See, here is the revelation to what would Jesus do. You don't have the power to do it. Okay? What he does is, when you ask yourself what would Jesus do, you get a picture of what he would do. All right? When you get a picture of what he would do, and you start to take 
one step in that direction, now you give the angel of God permission to assist. The angel needs permission to assist. Remember, remember, the reason why angels need permission is they are guests. Right? They are ministering spirits. Okay? So that an angel is your guest. Okay? But if your guest does not feel welcome, your angel will leave. You, you follow me? So it's important that you take the step that you see. Then the angel comes, and now you have the power to defeat the flesh or the soul. Because once the angel shows up, he has all the backing of God with him. So much so that if he needs another angel or two or five or 20, he can call for backup as long as you are, look, look, talk to me, as long as you're being a good host. As long as you are a good host to the angel, he's with you to strengthen and empower you. But I want to tell you that the biggest battle that Jesus faced, it was not, it was not Satan. It was not the Sadducees and, and the Pharisees. It wasn't them. The biggest battle that Jesus faced was when that, when that flesh, when the soul was telling him, don't go to Calvary. So much so that he was shaking. So much so that he was sweating blood. So much so that an angel had to show up to strengthen him. Jesus came real close in a battle, but because he was Moved by the moved by the spirit, the angel came. And here's the powerful thing. When the angel came, that that the uh the flesh was put under subjection. So any entity, any force that was influencing the flesh or the soul left. Why? Because when the angel showed up. The angel came with all the backing of God. And when God shows up, a demon don't stick around. A demon cannot stick around the presence of God. When the Lord shows up, demons flee. But you got to fight yourself. Every, listen to me, guys. Listen. You got to fight yourself every day. You got to fight you every day. And I, I'm so glad that he gave me this word, right? Because... I don't want us to keep blaming Satan, you know, for the battle. Or I don't want us to keep blaming, blaming people, all right? Let, let's, let's be honest, okay? We, and, and so this is really good because what it does is it gives us ownership, all right? And, and one, of the, one of the main problems with, with believers is we're not owners. We, we're actually, we actually abandon ownership and we give people and demons ownership. Right? That's another, that's another powerful uh, statement right there. Many believers are not owners. Many believers are being owned by people or demons, right? Because we always say the devil is busy or this person is doing this. We always put the blame on the devil, right? Or a person, right? How much power would you have if you say it's me? Because if you, if you look at you, you can, you can deal with you, but you, you, you don't have no power in changing a demon. You don't have no power in changing a person, but you got all power in changing you, right? So what would happen if you say, if you say, this is my flesh, this is my soul, I'm going to put it under, what would happen then? What would happen then? What would happen if you say, no, I'm being tempted to do this, but that's not what Jesus would do. So I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to go in a direction that God is, see, God's going to give you, Lord have mercy. God's going to give you the path to take, right? But this is what the problem is, okay? Because I'm hearing this thing. I'm hearing this thing. Here is, here is wisdom. Here's wisdom. <clears throat> When you, when your spirit is battling your flesh or your soul, the path that God gives you will be more challenging than the path that Satan has for you. 
Let me, let me, let me take this up. Right, that, that, that right there. That's that, that's strong. <clears throat> when you're having a battle with you, the path that God gives you to take will challenge you. But the path that Satan has for you to take won't. Won't. So the, the reason why, the reason why the spirit man fails in mankind is because we take the path of less resistance. You got to hear me, okay? You got to hear me. Anywhere God leads you, you're going to find resistance. Now, it's not God who's resisting you. It's your soul or your spirit trying to hold you back. All right? So when your soul or your spirit tries to hold you back, it's because doing, doing the thing that's wrong, or let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Doing the thing that gives you temporary satisfaction. Yeah. Someone, <clears throat> someone talks bad about me. I don't like it. My feelings are hurt. The first thing my flesh says is to curse that person out or, or, or approach that person very aggressively. That's the first thing that my flesh or my soul is saying. My flesh or my soul is saying, this person tarnished your name. This person mistreated you. This person did this. Go and get even. So your soul wants to get even. Okay? All right? So your soul is saying, take this route. But your spirit is saying, no. Your spirit is saying, go the other direction. Your spirit is saying, pray for that person. Your spirit is saying, bless that person. Which path is easier? When you have... The, when, when, you, when you are at a crossroad and you can go right or go left, which path is easier? The path to get even, the path to inflict pain, the path to do what you don't like done to you, to do it back, that's the easiest path. And what it does is it gives you temporary satisfaction because you feel satisfied. Okay, I got even. I told her off. Man, I did this. But what happens is you grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. What grieves the Holy Spirit is this, Melinda. Let me tell you what grieves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit <clears throat> is sent by Jesus to teach us what he hears from Jesus. All right. What grieves the Holy Spirit is this. When someone else has a louder or more impactful voice than he does, that, that grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves him. Because he desires to be the voice. Not a voice, but the voice in your life. It is, it is the desire of Holy Spirit to be the voice in your life and not another. Okay? Okay. That's why the Bible says that my sheep knows my voice, right? And the voice of a stranger. So, there is the voice of God, but also the voice of a stranger, okay? And what grieves the Holy Spirit is when he says, wow, I presented to you safety. I presented to you love. I gave you the way of escape, but you chose destruction. You chose to be in allegiance with a stranger's voice. See, that's what grieves the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is always speaking. Guys, listen to me on this, okay? There's never a time that the Spirit of God is not going after you to point you in the right direction. Never a time. Never a time. That's the reason why, listen to me, when you hear the voice, you should respect it. Has, has, I, want to, I want to strongly encourage you to honor the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
Your flesh is saying, do this. Your flesh is saying, do that. Your soul is saying, go in this direction. But the Spirit of God is saying, don't do that. Okay? I want to encourage you to follow the don't do that. I want to encourage you. So, <clears throat> don't get involved in gossip. That's not of God. Don't get involved in mischief. Don't get involved in, in being someone who, who causes strife. See, let me say something, right? <clears throat> when I first started this, there were a lot of things that happened that I didn't like. And I, I had to I had to learn my way where I'm at. I had to learn my way to the path that I'm on now. Okay. Let me tell you why I pray for people now. And I have no problem doing it. Okay. It's because I've come to the reality of this. If someone is talking about me, the ministry, if someone in the ministry is being messy, if someone in the ministry is causing other people to fall, if someone in the ministry is sabotaging the ministry, you're not doing that to me. Whoever insults me, whoever mistreats me, you're not insulting me. You're not mistreating me. You're, you are insulting and mistreating God. It's not me. So see, what I've learned is, <clears throat> I've learned to pray for people when they do stuff like that, because they don't see the bigger picture, right? What they're doing is when they come after me or anyone who is any one of God's children, let's say you, let's say someone's coming after you. Let's say someone is talking about you and someone is dogging you out and someone is mistreating you. You got to pray for them. The reason is they don't know. They think that they're coming at you, but the Bible says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So they're not coming at me. So I pray. And the reason why I pray now is because they don't know. They're going after God. They're not going after me. So the reason why I'm praying is I am praying for God to have mercy on that person. I'm praying for that person to wake up. You ain't coming at me. So you can't offend me. You follow me? So if you're around, <clears throat> you're being messy and you start gossiping about stuff and you put my name and stuff in. You start talking about me. I'm praying for you. I'm not offended by it. I'm praying for you. Why? Because you're not doing that to me. You're doing it to the one who's working in and through me. You follow me? Same for you. You got me? So that's the reason why your spirit should win. Because your spirit needs to pray for that person who don't know better. You who, you who know God and you who are a part, if you're a part of this ministry, one thing you get is revelation. You get insight. You get insight more than anything else in this ministry. So you don't have an excuse. You follow me? That's the reason why you should take the route that's given because that's the route. Listen, if you want to see God, you got to take the route that God has for you. Your flesh cannot lead you in the right direction. Jesus had to die to his flesh. Jesus had to die. His flesh, his flesh was trying to kill him. His flesh was really trying to kill him. If Jesus' flesh, now you got to see this, okay? If Jesus' flesh had its way, you and I would not have the opportunity to be in heaven. I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to, I'm going to stay right there. If his flesh would have won that battle in that garden, then you and I would not have a shot to be in heaven. Because the spirit won, it gave the flesh a black eye. See, that's the reason why we got the victory. Because someone... Jesus, to be exact, put his flesh under and told the flesh, I'm going to kill you so that I may live. You got to see this, okay? If the flesh would have won, Bridget, this is powerful. I'm getting revelation right now, Ashley, as I talk. 
I'm getting revelation right now on the spot. If the flesh would have won, Jesus would have died. But because the spirit won, Jesus lived. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let that marinate for a second because that just came, that came, that, that came straight. My, my, hold on a second. Angel of Wisdom, I, I, I acknowledge you, man. I acknowledge you. I, I thank you for feeding me. And thank you for taking me on this journey so I can feed the people. Thank you. Here is the revelation. Kiana, here's the revelation. If the flesh, Helen, so there's a battle in the garden. All right? Gerald, here's, here's a great revelation. The first Adam, Bridget, the first Adam... Adam and Eve, the first Adam had a battle in the garden and he lost, right? So God had to kill that animal and take the flesh from that animal and put it on Adam and Eve. Now, Janet, that animal, Miss Nancy, that animal that was killed in the Garden of Eden was a type and shadow of Jesus, so the skin of the animal, that was Jesus that covered Adam and Eve. The Bible says that God took a skin of the animal. So that's a type and shadow of salvation. So salvation was made known when the blood was shed in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Now, as long as that blood was not shed, Adam and Eve was dead. They were dead. So God had to shed the blood. To bring them back to life. Boy, I'll tell you. This angel, boy, he tough. My, boy, I'm going to tell you. This, this angel of wisdom, I'm going to tell you something. This angel tough, man. This angel, this angel of wisdom on me right now, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> boy, <clears throat> Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden was dead when they sinned. And the only thing that bought B-O-U-G-H-T. But the only thing that purchased them back to life was when the skin of the animal was put on them. At that point, God repurchased them. All right? Okay. Now, the, the flesh in the Garden of Gethsemane was slick. Because Jesus, because God shed blood so that they may live. But now the flesh is in the garden of Eden, and now the flesh wants to shed blood. This is what this is revelation. Now, this is revelation. This is revelation. Jesus' flesh wants to shed blood now, trying to copy what God did in the garden of Eden when he shed blood. But Jesus says, I don't need blood from the flesh. I need blood from the spirit. So the flesh was trying to fake Jesus out. Okay, here's blood. Jesus says, that's not the blood I need. So the flesh was trying to psych him out, trying to fool him, saying, here's blood. Jesus says, I don't need natural blood. I need blood from the spirit. So the flesh, if it won, Gerald, if the flesh would have won that battle, Helen, the flesh was going to kill Jesus. But because Jesus knew by the way of Holy Spirit that this blood won't satisfy, what I need to do is I need not to shed blood from the natural sense. I need to shed blood in the spirit. When I shed blood in the spirit, not only do I live, but now everyone after me will live as well. Man, this is so tough. This is so tough. This is tough. This is tough. See, that's the reason why, family, <clears throat> You got to make a daily decision to grow to this thing. You know, now this is, this is no overnight thing, okay? Because your flesh, the Bible says that in your flesh dwells no good thing. Your flesh is going to fight you every day, every single day. Your flesh is going to fight you. Your flesh is going to say, let me eat that apple pie ice cream 1230 at night. You're trying to lose weight though. You're trying to lose weight. You're trying to lose weight. You should not be eating apple pie and ice cream 12.30 at night. You're trying to lose weight. Your flesh will say, get even and curse that person out. 
Your flesh will say, be rude to that person. Your flesh will say, go ahead and, 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 have, and have road rage. Your flesh will say, go ahead and talk about that person. But you got to have enough in you to tell your flesh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We know that you can win the battle of your flesh because Jesus did it first. So if Jesus did it first, remember, he's the blueprint son. <clears throat> he's the sample son. So if he did it first, you can do it as well. But you got to be in the spirit. You got to be in the spirit. Now, let me help you with the last moments that I have. <clears throat> If you don't, if you don't listen, if you don't listen, now you got to hear me on this. Now you got to hear me on this. If you don't listen to your spirit, you won't see God. <clears throat> if you don't listen to your spirit, you won't see God. You got to hear me. I'm telling you this thing. If whoever you listen to is your God. Whoever you give your allegiance to is your God. If you don't listen to God, you won't see him. I'm not playing with this. If God is telling you to go right and you go left, you won't see God. See, a lot of times we talk about the love of God, the, the, you know, the, the mercy of God, the grace of God. And all of that is true. But don't forget, there is the righteous God as well. And the righteous God would allow you to go anywhere you choose. Now, he'll fight for you, but he can't fight for you if you don't give him something to fight with. You follow me? And so, if God is telling you, don't start no mess. If God is telling you, stop gossiping. If God is telling you, don't be nasty. If God is telling you, don't be starting trouble, and you do that, God will look at you and say, you wicked, you wicked soul. Why? Because you got more of an allegiance to your flesh than you do to his spirit. So what you've done is you have given the spirit, you have given the spirit, Lord have mercy. Oh my God. You have given the spirit grief because the spirit is fighting for you all the time. There's not a time that the spirit of God won't fight for you. He'll fight for you every single day. But you want to listen to the spirit. Because what you listen to the most. Determines where you go. Listen to this. If you listen more to your flesh or your soul. The voice of the spirit becomes so faint. To the point where you don't hear it no more. And that's a dangerous place to be. Oh my God. That is a dangerous place to be. Remember he says, my sheep know my voice. Know my voice. Let me ask you, do you know the voice of God? And if you know it, if you know it, are you listening to the voice? Or are you moving past it? The voice may tell you to keep your mouth shut. And if you open your mouth, you have disrespected the voice. The voice may tell you, don't go. And if you move, you have disobeyed the voice. In 2024, the believer, let me say, let me say something. To you. In 2024, the believer, Maurice, don't have much wiggle room. I'm telling you what I know. And, and I... I'm going to tell you straight up, I know for sure I don't have no wiggle room. I don't have any. I don't have any. And I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. If I ever did something 
It wasn't because I did not know. I chose to go in a direction of weakness and I did not go. I did not go in the direction of strength. When you follow your flesh or your soul, that my brother, that my sister is the direction of absolute weakness. There is no strength in following your flesh and following your soul. That's the reason why. If you want to be strong, you got to follow the Spirit of God. Listen, the challenge that you have between your flesh and your spirit, oh, it's lethal. No war, no war that has ever been fought. Listen to this revelation. No war that has ever been fought has been greater than the war of your spirit and your soul. Not one. Y'all do me a favor. Don't, don't listen to this. this, this uh, don't pay attention to this right here. Y'all stay focused with me. Don't pay attention to this, this, uh, this last message. We're not doing it. See, when you, when you have discernment, you can see this stuff, man. You can see it. You follow me? Don't, don't, they see, the enemy comes to throw, to throw, the, you know, a distraction in there. Here you are getting this revelation, right? So you know this is strong, okay? You're getting this word, and someone has the audacity to come and try to run some game on this, on this live. You see, that's the battle I'm talking about. That you would press through, okay? And the conviction is there. But you dare to come on this live and try to run some game. See, see, it's happening in real time, guys. This happens in real time. You follow me? It's important that you follow the convictions of God. I'm going to give you this blueprint, and then I'll be gone. All right? Your flesh <clears throat> would never convict you. I won't do it. Now, I'm not talking about condemnation because your spirit your spirit won't condemn you so let me give you revelation your spirit will convict you but your flesh will condemn you lord have mercy both of them are going to give you that sin but the question i want to ask you is are you rolling with the conviction or are you rolling with the condemnation talk to me up in here what are you rolling with? Are you rolling with the conviction of the spirit? Or are you rolling with the condemnation of the flesh? God would never condemn you, but he'll convict you. Now, a conviction comes to keep you in check, to keep you in line, to point you to the right. But, come on now, but the flesh comes to condemn See, it's the flesh that brings you guilt, shame, and condemnation. It's the flesh that has you tossing and turning. It's the flesh that, see, your spirit, your spirit is not giving you the battle. Any battle that you face is coming from the flesh. Boy, this, 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 this heavy right here. This heavy right here. See, it's the flesh that's giving you the battle. And what the flesh wants to do is, the flesh wants you to give in. So when you give in, now condemnation comes. Now guilt and shame comes. And when that comes, you can't come boldly to the throne of grace. You are ashamed. You are embarrassed. You got your head down. Your prayer ain't got no power. Your prayer don't have no authority because condemnation comes. And when condemnation comes, what it does is it strips you of your, your strength. Condemnation is a thief. That's the reason why you got to listen to your conviction. If God is telling you to keep your mouth shut, then stop gossiping. If God is telling you to bring peace, then stop being messy. If God is telling you to pray for someone, then stop cursing them out. If God is telling you to show love, then stop showing hate. Do you want peace or do you want disruption? What do you want? And if you want the right thing, then follow the spirit because the flesh don't have nothing for you. Your flesh is going to put you in the wrong direction every single time, every time. Let me tell you something. The reason why people don't follow the spirit 
is this right here. People believe that when they follow their spirit, they look real weak. I ain't no punk. I ain't no sucker. I ain't gonna, I, I ain't no punk, man. I'm not gonna, I ain't praying for that dude. I'm not showing no love to her. <coughs> I'm not doing that. Well, something wrong with that. Because you benefit, you benefit from someone who won't no punk, who won't no sucker, and he did what he's asking for you to do. You got it? If Jesus did it first, what you saying? You saying that what? You saying you 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 more powerful than Jesus? If Jesus laid down his life for you, was he a punk? Was he a sucker? No. He was strong. He was strong. Why? He followed the spirit. Boy, I tell you. This Holy Spirit, man. I tell you, man. Let me let me go to um <clears throat> I'm gonna go to Romans chapter seven. My Bible is so good. I, I gotta I gotta move. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Romans chapter seven, verse eighteen. Let me pull it up on my phone. Here. Romans seven. I'm gonna to go to verse eighteen. For I know that in me. That is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. This whole Romans chapter 7, when you get a chance, you should read it. But this is the Apostle Paul that says that in his flesh dwells no good, nothing good. So let me, let me just tell you. You cannot expect anything good from your flesh. It won't happen. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. That's why you can't live according to the flesh, family. You got to live according to the spirit. And if you're a believer, then you got to, you're going to have to start to start to get your alignment right. Your alignment. Don't gossip. Don't do it. It's not of God. Don't be messy. Don't tarnish people's name. Don't start to don't start to have bad feelings towards people. That's not that's not it. That's your flesh. Your flesh is leading. What would Jesus do? We know what he would do. We know what he would do. He would bless those who cursed him. He would say, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." He would say, "He he would he would say today with me when I go to paradise, you come with." That's what Jesus would do. And when you ask yourself that question, you're supposed to pause for the cause. See, there's a cause for the pause. And when you ask yourself that question, you don't move. You wait. Get the picture. Get the picture. Get the picture. Then move. And when you move, the angel comes to help you along the way. I hope, I hope this blessed you. I hope you got something. Because, listen, many of us are hoping... Wishing, praying, fasting, all kinds of stuff. And ain't nothing shaking. Why? Because your spirit is your spirit has has a say in it. I mean your flesh rather. Your flesh has a say in it. Your flesh cannot have a say in your life. Your flesh cannot listen to me. Listen to me. Your flesh cannot have a say in your life. And you walk with God. Because your flesh would, would, is contrary to God. It contradicts God. It goes in the opposite direction. Mm. Remember, remember, remember. Your flesh always goes to the path of least resistance. I'm going to say it again. Your flesh always goes. 
your flesh always takes the path. Of least resistance. Least. 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 And it's a. It's a temporary satisfaction. I, I'm seeing this. I'm going to share this and I'll be gone. <clears throat> Samson. Samson. Delilah. Betrays Samson. Three times. Three times. Samson was so moved in the flesh that he went back to a place that he knew was not good for him. His flesh took over to the point where his flesh led him to the slaughter. This is a great example. I just thank you. This is this is so good. Let me share this, Samson. <clears throat> Samson was a mighty man in the spirit, but when he allowed his flesh to take over, his flesh led him to the slaughter. So much so that Samson was betrayed by Delilah, not once, not twice, but three times. Delilah was not Samson's battle. Samson's battle was his flesh wanted Delilah. So much so that he shut down his spirit. And when Samson gave into his flesh, the very first thing the Bible says is that he was vexed in his spirit. He wasn't vexed in the flesh. Come on, talk to me up in here. Samson was so disturbed that the Bible says that Samson was vexed in the spirit. That means, family, that it was a conviction, but he, he, he pressed through the conviction. And when Samson pressed through the conviction, the first thing that happened was he lost his covenant. They cut his hair. When he lost his covenant, he lost his strength because the here was symbolic of the covenant. And when the covenant was cut, he lost his strength. The next thing that they did, they bound him. And when they bound him, they cut out his eyes. So he lost his covenant. He was bound and lost vision. When you give into your flesh, my God, today, my Jesus Christ have mercy, the angel of wisdom. When you give into your flesh, I got something for you. The first thing you're going to lose is your covenant. I'm going to give you this wisdom as he gives it to me right now. I'm going to give you this work. The first thing you lose when you give into your flesh is your covenant. And once you lose your covenant, you're going to be bound. And once you're bound, you're going to lose your vision. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back because they didn't hear me. Mm -hmm. If you follow your flesh, the first thing you're going to lose is the secret to your strength. That's your covenant. Once you lose the secret to your strength, which is your covenant, the next thing, the Sanda, the next thing, the next thing will happen to you. You're going to be bound. And once you're bound, you'll lose your vision. That's the reason why you don't. I'm telling you, my angel of wisdom is talking to me right now. I'm telling you, that's the reason why you don't want to follow this thing. That's the reason why you want to shut your mouth and stop gossiping. That's the reason why you want to stop being messy and get to yourself by yourself and learn something today. That's the reason why you don't want to tarnish someone's name and you don't want to talk down to people. That's the reason why you don't want to give in to road rage. That's the reason why you want to forgive that. Because if you don't, you're going to lose your covenant, you're going to be bound, and lose your vision. Praise God. I got time for that. I got time for that. I got time for that. Hallelujah.
The supernatural, the supernatural peace of God is with us right now. And if anything that you're doing in your life <clears throat> is pointing you towards your flesh, this is your warning. I'm going to tell you what I hear. <clears throat> take it or leave it. I, it's up to you at this point. If you take another step towards your flesh, you've been warned. Because you're responsible for what you hear. If you, if you heard this, there's a level of responsibility that you have. If you got some mess in your life, you better, get, you better get with the Holy Spirit and ask him to help you to clean yourself up. Gossiping, being nasty, scheming on how to hurt someone, plotting on doing the wrong thing. See that, that, that right there? That, that ain't gonna work over here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <clears throat> because God is searching the heart of man. That's the reason why I ain't mad at nobody. Why? If you ever come for me, you came for the wrong one. I'm going to pray for you. Yep. I see everything. I pray for people. Why? Because they're not coming after me. They're coming after God. And I'm sharing that because you don't got to get even. When you walk on the side of the spirit, it is God who gets even. It ain't you. You can't get, if you ever get even, let me say something to you. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. If you do what someone else did, or if you go after the flesh, then you didn't get even. Two wrongs don't make nothing right. And two wrongs make nothing even. Listen to me now. If you go after the flesh, you, you never got even. You actually lost. Yeah, big time. This is grown, this is grown folks' conversation. But I can't play with you. Why? Your soul is on the line. What would Jesus do? He'll follow the spirit and kill the flesh. Father, I gave you wisdom. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I gave you revelation. I gave you truth. I thank you for the angel that, that did the work. And my angel is saying right now, I would come and meet you where you are to help you to clean up that mess. <clears throat> I hear from my angel loud and clear. The angel of wisdom is saying that I am here. And if you call out to me, I'll come and clean up the mess. I will help you to go towards the spirit and abandon the direction of the flesh. Angel, angel of God, anyone who is calling you to bring healing, to bring deliverance to them, do the work of the Lord. Bring healing and bring rest to the people who have a heart to go after the spirit and abandon the direction of the flesh. Have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit, <clears throat> direct the angel on where to go, who to touch right now in the name of Jesus, and bring us to a place of absolute freedom, absolute deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's say the prayer of salvation. Someone out there may not know Jesus or you want to pray for some family members. Wasn't this teaching just absolutely wonderful? Wasn't this wonderful? Yes. You know, you know how powerful this is? If you notice, after I read that scripture, I, I, I didn't grab my phone. Why? Because I'm giving you revelation. You got to see this, guys. Listen, this is not me. So, so I'm saying this for a reason. You got to know let me say something real quick before I pray for salvation. Family, you have to know when God is giving you something and when a man is giving you something. All right? Now, let me tell you again. Let me tell you again. I am not this good. I promise you. 
I promise you, I, I want to tell you the absolute truth. I am not Gerald. I promise you, Christina, I promise you, I promise you, I am not this good. Tanya, I am not this good. I promise you, I'm not. So, Sharia, you have to know, hmm, Tara, you got to know when you're hearing from a man and hearing from God. You just now, family, heard from God. And so if you don't take this, man, that's that's tough because, yeah, you seeing me, but I'm telling you, this ain't me. It's it's the Christ in me. It's my angel. I don't do I don't do this without help. I get help from this, Sharon. You, you follow me? So you gotta know that this is the Lord. And when this Koshanda, when the Lord is speaking, he's doing this for a reason. You gotta get this. You don't get off of this and go back to that stuff. Don't do that. Listen to the Lord. This is powerful. Don't play with this. God, God will remind you of this one day. And you'll be like, well, I, it, it, was, it was the apostle. It wasn't the apostle. The apostle done told you it ain't him. It's not me. So don't give me no credit. This is Jesus. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the angel of God. This is God the Father. It's not me, and I'm cool with it. I don't want it to be me. Never. But I'm saying that for a reason. Discern when you're hearing from God. Because God loves you. He wants you to change. Don't play with these moments like this. Let's pray the prayer of salvation. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and rose on the third day just for me. I believe that you are God in the flesh. I thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and changing my life. I thank you for assisting me, helping me to go in the direction of the Spirit and avoid the direction of the flesh. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance and freedom. Thank you, Jesus, for breaking the hold of the enemy. Ah. In Jesus' name. Sunday, Sunday, uh, I just heard. I just heard this. I just heard this. Sunday we're going to experience. Sunday's our anniversary, and I heard the angel of God say, "I want you to announce it." So I'm going to announce it. <clears throat> Sunday at service, we're going to experience deliverance. Let me say this: If you know anyone who's bound, anyone who's experiencing mental issues, anyone who's experiencing some kind of issues, even health wise, if you know anyone who's bound. Bring them to church on Sunday. I just heard I just heard the Lord say, the angel of the Lord say, that we're going to experience a high level of deliverance on Sunday. Bring someone with you who you know needs deliverance, and they will be delivered on Sunday. I promise you that. I promise you that. I just I just heard that. Bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. And anyone out there who's struggling to let go, put it in God's hands. He'll help you, okay? Raise your hands for the blessing. Hey, did you guys enjoy this teaching? If you did, flood your screen with hearts for the Holy Spirit, please. If you enjoyed it, flood your screen with hearts for Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you. Every heart goes to you. Show it to Jesus. And then Jesus, show it to God the Father. <clears throat> We're gonna have we're gonna have a high level of deliverance on Sunday. I promise you, you're gonna see. Raise your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his shalom. That's his peace. Now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. We'll see you on Sunday for an awesome message. And play this message over and over again this week. It'll help throughout the week. God bless you. We love you. Have an awesome night. And have a blessed rest of your week. We'll see you on Sunday.